Hello. Okay, so here we are again. Um, <clears throat> so this is uh, number forty-three, and as you can see by the name, it's going to be open water safety uh, session. Now uh, you may be thinking, what the heck is he talking about open water safety for? And some of you eagle-eyed uh, folk will know that I'm running. I've managed to. Um, find a lake that will let me teach in there. Uh, so I'm doing some one-to-one -one open water sessions next Monday and Tuesday. So that's literally the 1st and 2nd of June. Um, it looks, uh, hopefully I'm going to fill the, the slots up. I can only fit like four people a day. Um, and so I'll do, be doing the uh, live stream from um, from the back of the van on uh, on Monday hopefully if all goes well anyway so um, if you're interested in the open water sessions uh, drop us a line and we can sort that out so uh, with that in mind I thought I would give a session about open water safety and just some interesting facts about open water safety and, and uh, some variations of it that we have um, put together as no tanks. Another thing was um, that I saw a, a post uh, the other day, a question posed by somebody, and it shocked me that this person was, uh, what they were saying, uh, on an open forum because they were... They were ignoring unaware of some real basic uh, safety uh, stuff which I thought hey well, you know, I'm going to have to tell everybody again the basic safety stuff for open water safety uh, so I um, that's that's why I'm doing this okay. um, uh, other breaking news um, is that it looks like we may have a new date for the liverboard in October so if you're interested in the liverboard, I will. I haven't told anybody at all. Just you people who are watching tonight, first people to hear about it. So liverboard at the end of October and um, a yacht trip at the end of September. Okay, that's that's the breaking news. It looks like, um, obviously, yeah, lockdown depending, but it does look like it's going to, uh, there's a good possibility of it happening. So. Okay, so open water safety. So, um oh and there's also oh, all the news tonight isn't it all the news tonight so uh, there's also a uh no tanks club session next wednesday so that's wednesday the third uh in richmond park so it's a social distanced uh dry session in the park uh so please come along uh maybe we'll get the bbc down to say look free diving club hasn't got a pool but they're still training uh, as a group socially distanced yeah okay Okay, so um, open water safety. So let's start at the very basics. Uh, never dive alone. Now, why do we say never dive alone? Um, because if you hold your breath too long, you're going to black out and there is no self-rescue from a blackout. Um, if you black out on a sofa, you will start breathing straight away. There's many videos of it. Um, so um, not that I'm suggesting you go and look one, but if you black out holding your breath on a sofa, like <gasps> that's it. That's how long it takes you to come back. Okay, uh, but if you're underwater, your body knows you're underwater and it won't breathe, and therefore there is no self rescue from um, uh, a blackout in water. So you have to have a buddy, and the buddy is there to start with just to get your face out of the water um, and allow you to kind of breathe again, take the mask off, talk to you, yeah, a standard rescue. But basically get your face out of the water, that's the important thing. So um, the next thing is if you have a, an injury, a cramp or something, you need, you're you going to want somebody there to kind of help you, um, you know, with it. Um, on this kind of theme always tell somebody where you're diving okay it sounds really obvious but uh, it's happened too many times where somebody's gone diving and they haven't told anybody uh, or two people have gone diving 
uh, um, and they haven't told anybody. They've just disappeared. Nobody knows. So it's very, very simple. Um, you just say, you know, uh, you, you ring up your, your dad and just, or your girlfriend or husband, anybody, just say, hi, I'm going diving. I'm going to go down to this place. Um, so I'll give you a ring later tonight. And that's it. That's all it takes. It's not, it doesn't need to be as precise as it would be, say, for caving, which we have a system called call out, but it's in a similar sort of vein. So a call out in caving is you ring up and you say, I will be out by five o'clock and ring you. And if you're not out by five o'clock, ring cave rescue. Um, but it's in a similar sort of vein. Okay, I'm going down to this place, I'm going to be back because if, um, yeah, if something happens, it's yeah you want somebody to kind of be ringing the emergency services so um it may even be that you just you know broken down and just had a puncture or something and you, you want somebody to kind of come and find you it's it's you know it doesn't have to be dramatic uh rescues at sea by helicopter but you know okay so that's the basics so um, I'm not going to go through uh, particularly rescue uh, as such or anything because that's a little bit kind of um, odd in this scenario. But obviously uh, we want to look at some things that we can do to make ourselves safer. So the number one is we never dive alone. Second one is always have a knife. All no tank seniors will have a knife on their belt. Um, but you don't have to be a senior to get a knife. So please, if you are dive in this year in open water buy yourself a knife do it amazon bang um you get actually line cutters is better than a knife a line cutter is um uh, just a hook so you could it's really sharp and you can cut it you know through lines if, you, if you're caught up in lines and that's that's why you have it there's no there's no excuse not to have a knife no reason why you shouldn't have a knife and the line cutters are safe um you know they're not going to let you take it on a, an airplane in hand luggage but they're not going to, nobody's going to question it um, if um, you have it in, say, Egypt, where knives and gloves are not allowed. Uh, but a line cutter, you're not, you're, not, you're not going to use it for nefarious uses on the reef. Uh, so you, you, you know, can get a line cutter. So get a line cutter. Um, um, <laughs> um, thanks. Thanks, Chubb. Yeah, thanks. Uh, <laughs> so um a line cutter everybody has a line cutter little things you need to think about are um when you're diving you never keep a snorkel in your mouth and we don't use snorkels particularly in no tanks but there's a major reason why you won't use a snorkel uh when you're underwater you don't keep it in your mouth because if you do black out you you get jaw lock and it's going to lock onto the, the snorkel and even if you've got a buddy there it's going to be an added awkward thing to kind of get, you know, thing out of my mouth. I don't like snorkels from the perspective of uh, in in mouth as well. Just on a general note, if you're coming up from a dive and you're knackered, or maybe a little bit close to the edge, okay, uh, but definitely just knackered, having a tube full of water and you're stuck in your mouth is not not a good option. Okay, so. Uh, you know, pop it out of your mouth when you dive. You'll see, uh, you know, Spiros, old Spiros, always have it in their mouth, but modern Spiros, have, you know, kind of have, have got a kind of just kind of technique of popping it out. Generally, I pop it out after the duck dive because the duck dive, you know, might move. So I do the duck dive and just pop it out. And if you've got it, if they've got the snorkel in the correct place on the back of the head, not on the side of the head, but on the back of the head, it, it holds around the neck and, and is no trouble. But yeah, just pop it out of the mouth um obviously uh, the problems come when you um are um uh, dive too long too deep okay that's where the problem occurs people go on about um shallow water blackout and the, the change in pressures in the lungs and that kind of makes you black out mm, it doesn't it doesn't make you black out you hold your breath too long you've gone too deep that's what makes you black out um uh joe rogan rip sorry um uh so um that post just just throw me a little bit 
Uh, okay, so um, uh, yeah, shallow water blackout. Uh, you've blacked out. They black out. You black out because you held your breath too long, gone too deep. Um, the fact that the uh, the pressure change does uh, um, uh, affect how quickly the uh, the oxygen level drops, but it's not why you blacked out. Okay, it just it just changes the the, the amount of oxygen you've got available and you know uh, you black out from it but the end result was purely because you held your breath too long okay so um <clears throat> next up um say so rescue um, i'm not going to go into too much detail um the important thing you want to remember is get them to the surface keep them on the surface and if you're in an open water scenario then you know take uh, or over an un um unmanaged as it were uh, as, as location if you're out of sea then you might have to do some sort of towing but uh, the, 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 the kind of the ultimate is aim is you know, get them to surface keep them on the surface so when we're diving um, we always have um, uh, two people first person goes down second person goes down and and meets them on the way up okay that's that's kind of standard standard um, Fair. If we're in somewhere like Raysbury, we know that they're not going. To go, they're not going to go particularly deep because Raysbury is not particularly deep. But equally well, we don't actually know where they're going to go because uh, you know visibility is pretty bad. So we always have a plan, and the plan is usually maybe there's a little boat down there. You go down a rope, have a wander around the, the boat, and then come back the rope. And somewhere like Raysbury, we dive it a lot. We know what's there. So, you know, you don't have to say, I'm going to go around the boat clockwise, and I'm going to do it. We know you're going to go around the boat one way or the other. But it's important that you don't go down, around the boat, see something else, and then swim off right, and come up, because your buddy is not looking for that. Okay, your buddy's looking for you to come up, hopefully, probably, in best scenario, on the rope you went down, so they're looking for you on the rope, or somewhere on in the, in the vicinity. Okay. So have a plan. So um, plan the dive, dive the plan. It, it's an old adage. And um, it's saying Raysbury with less visibility. Um, you know, the search area is just going to be a, a small area. And there's not really much point in going down uh, to meet them because if, you know, if they get back to the bottom of the rope at, say, eight metres and start coming up by the time you've done your duck dive, it's, you know, they're, they're already there. But it does bring us on to a nice point of rope protocol so if you're using a rope as in Raybury or a rope just out in free whenever you start coming up you give it a tug two reasons why the first is you're telling the people on the surface I'm coming back now this rope could be 70 meters long it could be 120 meters long boom I'm coming back they instantly know instantly know on the surface that you're coming back there's there's no that's it like it's it's instant Boom, i'm coming back so they can plan their safety dive you know it's going to be a different safety dive if they're 120 meters or 50 meters or 20 meters or 10 meters okay but you know how deep it is dunk and 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 you you know um you can you can you're telling the people i'm coming back the second thing is it um if you pull your arm it's going to make your legs go down so you're going to be facing head up and the right way to come back up. So it's a good way to, to turn anyway. Okay, so I'm coming back. Wherever, wherever you are, I'm coming back. Now, um, uh, you'll see, if especially if you've been out into with Nice, to, if, especially if you've been out to Nice with us, uh, that uh, I'll read the rope or you know somebody will read the rope. Um, and you can tell quite a lot from the rope. You can tell how they're moving, you can tell their alignment, you can tell how fast they're going, how deep they are, just by feeling uh, the little vibrations on the rope. Um, and uh, I, I teach re rope reading and seniors kind of start doing it anyway. Um, but you, 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 it's quite funny, you see the novices, oh, what do I do? I'm, hold, I can't feel anything, I can't feel anything. And then you've got somebody like Darren on the bottom, I can't feel anything. Donk. Oh, he's coming back because Darren's got a mighty pull on him. And, and boom, and you go, oh, he's coming back. I read that. 
Yes, there you go. So the simplest rope reading, you can read all these tiny little details, but the simplest is they're coming back. Okay. So um, rope usage, that's that's what you use it for. Obviously, if you're going deep on a, uh, on a rope, a free hanging rope, then you're going to have a lanyard, uh, which means you're not going to be more than a meter away from it, which helps for you because you can close your eyes. You know you're not going to drift off helps your body because the search error is going to be a meat around the rope okay um so um let's have a, a quick look at a video okay so um yeah and then we'll talk about the safety systems that we had set up <laughs> Okay, so uh, that was Darren out on uh, on the ladder, out on the yacht trip. Uh, thanks, Panos. Uh, which again, I've mentioned uh, earlier, and I'll mention again. We've got a possible um, um, trip going out on the last week of September on the yacht trip. So if you want to come along and dive that very dive, then let us know. Okay, so that was uh, Darren going down, and uh, I humorously called it uh, the wrong turn because he came out of the wrong hole. Uh, which is just not that it matters, didn't matter at all. There's at least 25 holes you can pick from, but he came out the wrong one. <laughs> um, and it was fine. So, how many people did it take to do that dive? Well, you had Darren doing a dive, okay? But he also had a safety diver, which you saw at the end. Um, it was Part of it was me and part of it wasn't me because I was filming some of it, but it doesn't really matter, okay? So, um so he went down, did his dive, and came back. And his buddy, because it's beautiful, crystal clear water, you can see exactly where they are. But equally well, roughly know how long the dive's going to be because Darren had said, I'm going to do this dive, I'm going to do this, I'm going to go there. So you roughly know where how, how long it's going to be. So the safety diver can t time his dive. And they went down, and you can see he meets him at, well, where it's 10 metres. So as Darren's coming up, and you can see his mighty pulls on them, boom, amazing free uh, free immersion technique he has it's beautiful to watch anyway so watch it again and and see his free immersion technique um so safety divers there and darren comes up uh, and, and safety diver meets him and they come up so that's two people it takes but of course there's somebody filming it okay and it was in a couple of takes so there was a couple of different uh, people filming it um but there was at least uh, one other videographer so that's three people but the videographer also has a safety diver which you don't see so um in this case there was a person on the surface just uh, just you know a separate separate person so you, you know you can in one shot there was three people okay but obviously there's a videographer filming and the videographer had a safety as well now um the video videographer depends what the dive is might be doing the same dive as darren might be doing longer dive than darren might be doing a shorter dive than darren depending on how you how you're planning it but there is definitely a plan and the plan will be okay i'm going to film darren i'm going to go down film him come towards me and that's it that's it. that's the shot i'm getting so my safety diver if i'm videoing him coming down he's just watching me i film darren come down and then i leave and my safety is there to to help you know to meet me back up there and they don't care about darren and they're just looking after me. Sometimes at the end, if you saw uh, Darren swam away from the camera and then up, obviously the videographer was still there at the bottom. So the safety diver for the video safety diver was behind the camera, probably on their way down. So when Darren hits the surface, video finish, 
come back up okay so that's four people to do that shot and that you know there's another person on the surface as well so there's five people in that shot and if there's another person on the surface we we'll generally use them as a timer um, timing person and they will give nice timing uh, units for, for everybody for again for safety so that would take five people to, to do that dive okay um, um, so that's it so we're moving on to advanced safety systems in open water and sometimes uh, we use um, a sled okay and sometimes we use sled for safety sometimes we use sled for filming sometimes we use sled for whatever uh, and sled's quite interesting because um, obviously you have no, uh, no effort getting down there and no effort getting back so you can tend to spend a little bit more time at the bottom um, which means if you're two people on a sled okay the, they've got a driver designated driver and a designated passenger okay, and you decide what you're going to do you plan a dive and you explicitly say so the <coughs> driver will say i will hang around for you but if i can't hang around i'm out of there i will leave the sled for you okay. There has to be another, at least one, usually two safety divers, okay? For one for each of the two people on the, on the sled. Depends how deep it is, depends what you're doing, but usually there'll be another two. So as soon as you have two people on the sled, you have two safety divers. And those two safety divers are only watching their own one diver, okay? So let's have another look at uh, an, another short video uh, that we made on another Greek trip. Okay, so uh, that was the Iota Cyclops uh, again on a um, on a yacht trip out in Greece. Okay, um, um, on the island of it wasn't Kefalonia, it was next to it, it was Ithaca, um, and um, we saw dolphins. So I stuck a little bit of dolphin footage at the beginning, but um, the interesting thing is you got driver and you got a, a diver, um, and so there's two people so they will have two safety divers but of course i was filming that as well uh so the shots where you see two two uh people on the sled i'm filming as well so there needed to be a third safety diver so that took six people to to make a couple of those shots okay um but again it was decided uh in that particular film that mika was driving and julian was exploring um, and Mika stayed on the sled, waiting for Julian to come back, set the sled up, and and then kind of brought the brought the sled back. Okay. Um, uh, and that's it, really. So I just wanted to show a couple of dives and get you thinking about how we make or how you would make it uh, safe, uh, how you'd set up the safety system based on what we kind of do.
Obviously, as we move through different dives, uh, things add up. So, for instance, um, you saw at the end there that Mika had a, a torch. That's because we we're going in a cave. You always have a torch in a cave. But if we're going in a proper dark cave, then uh, everybody will have a torch. And there's special, specific things that you do with the torch. You never point your torch down at the diver because that just blinds them. And, and the caves we go in are crystal clear. That's why we go in them. Um, so you have a problem knowing where the surface is and where the, where the, where the surface is, where the, where the um, rock kind of usually meets the water or where the surface is. So we have protocols for the safety divers at the surface where they point their torch that tells the divers underneath where it's safe to kind of come up. And in fact, in these scenarios, everybody has a torch, but the torch you have underwater is not the most important. Because if that torch goes out, it's okay. You can go back to your buddies if you can see where they are. So the important thing is the buddies' torch, and the buddies have to place it somewhere so that um, on the wall so you know where to go to, how to come up. Um, and again, as soon as you enter into caves, there's more safety systems and, you know, um yeah that's yeah the safety kind of steps up but we're not going to go into specifics about that i just wanted to kind of give people a, a bit of an idea about the open water safety systems that we kind of put into place um so if there's any questions um i I'll, you know we'll hang around for a, a couple of uh, minutes longer um uh but apart from that that's it tomorrow night what i'm going to do is i'm going to go through and give a best of uh recap of the videos that we've done on the um on these live streams so there's a, a few of them which are kind of stand out i really think people should uh kind of watch and i will describe what's in them so that you can have a recap and 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 see what we've covered over over the uh, couple of months but it does look like lockdown is softening which is good and it doesn't look too long until we're getting in the water again uh, well, in fact i'm getting in the water with some people on monday so if you fancy getting in the water let me know okay so thank you very much and i'll see you tomorrow night don't forget next wednesday uh, wednesday the third of june is uh the first club session after lockdown in richmond park and it's a dry socially distanced session please come along because it'll be great photos it'll be a great laugh um uh, obviously we're not going to kind of you know uh, kind of hand around beers and stuff or, or kind of hugging uh, or uh, even getting close to each other but it'll be funny it'll be fun and it'll be a good training session so 7 30 richmond park and weather looks like it's going to be good so see you later Cheers.